Hi, hello, welcome back to another Wool & Witch podcast. My name is Steph and I run Wool & Witch, which is a small yarn dyeing business in Bristol in the UK. Uh, by small, <laughs> I mean it's just me that runs it, uh, with occasional help from my partner Ant. So my last video was at the start of September. It was all to do with the Southern Wool Show, which I was exhibiting at. Uh, so it was about the prep work and then what I managed to get for myself there and how it was and everything. It is now <laughs> the start of October. I meant to do this video last week, just couldn't <laughs> couldn't get hold of it. Uh, basically at my day job they fired like five people a few weeks ago and they have only hired one, one person to replace all that work. Uh, so I've had to pick up quite a, quite a lot of responsibility from then. Uh, so it's been hard to try and squeeze in the time and energy to do more videos. I really enjoy making them, but I think with daily life sometimes it can just be a bit much to set everything apart, like film it, edit it, it's a lot to do. So, But I've managed to find the time today, which is really nice. Um, I've got the house to myself today, ants at work, uh, so I thought it was time just to set everything up and update you on what's been going on. <laughs> so last month I managed to actually finish off quite a lot of projects I've had like halfway finished or ones that I've had sat in my cupboard meaning to start as well so it's been really it's been really nice to like finish things off and have some new beginnings as well. I feel that's a bit of a metaphor for this time of year as well, uh, with autumn literally just starting, uh, the weather's getting colder um, and we've got things, new things happening in the season, stuff that's ending, so it's been really nice that my knitting has also followed that cycle as well. So I guess one of the first things that I've managed to finish, if any of you have uh, watched my previous episodes you will know that I've been knitting the Astrigal for a while um, and I've managed to finish it, <laughs> which is really nice. I finished it the weekend before Southern Wall Show, so I managed to wear it to the show. Um, and it is, what's this jumper? Um, and it fits, it fits almost perfectly, um, which is quite surprising considering that I didn't gauge swatch because I am lazy. There's no two ways about it. I am lazy and do not bother to do this. So it took me a few attempts to knit it to the correct size, but it's pretty much bang on. Um, it's kind of nice and loose around my, my waist, but nice and fitted across the chest and down my sleeves as well. It's nice and fitted. It's three quarter length. Uh, my cats have already, already gone at it. There's some uh, lovely threads pulled that I'm gonna have to weave in soon uh, but it's just a very nice sort of texture running around the neckline and then a really nice uh, pattern going around the ribbing as well um, and it cuts off just at my waist which is like the perfect length and yeah it's just it's really nice to finish a full garment uh, this is only my second sweater that I've knitted on uh, circular needles as well uh, and it was really nice <laughs> it was just a nice uh, sort of slow project that I've had going for a while I got frustrated at the start because I wasn't knitting it to my size but that's my own fault for not swatching at the start um, but I won't learn because it'd be exactly the same if I do it any other time <laughs> Uh, but I used my own yarn, uh, so this is Falling Embers on my Merino DK base, uh, and I alternated skeins, so every other row is a different skein, um, and then when I changed skeins, I like faded one into the other, if that makes sense. Um, it took, I think, about three and a half skeins, um, so not not a great deal but it is a cropped jumper with cropped sleeves as well um but yeah i really like it i will knit another one because it's just super cozy it fits perfectly uh, and it's just a really pretty design and i think whatever color you do it in it'll have a different effect on it 
and I think it just looked really really nice. Um, I'm tempted to do it in one of my green colours, so like Grove Sister I think would be really nice, or All There and Back Again I think would for a really nice sort of Lord of the Ringsy effect. Um, so it's really tempting to knit another one, but I've got a few other projects on the go at the moment, so that will be in the future. <laughs> other projects that I have finished. Uh, I have finished a few pairs of socks recently as well so I finished the the second sock of my phoenix feather uh, sock kit. I've had the first one done four months um, but I haven't done the second one but I've finished now so that's good. I also finished, well I started and finished another pair of socks as well uh, which is just another pair of vanilla socks uh, I used a German short row heel, uh, it was just an improvised pattern, uh, just just because I needed another pair of socks out of my system basically. Uh, I had this really pretty yarn that was gifted to me as well which is uh, which is Rainbow Reflections by Fibre Fox um, and it's a sort of a very muted rainbow going through it with uh, like silver greys. Yeah it's just a very very pretty very muted colour tone um, it's just really nice uh, and I done the first first sock oh, again a while ago uh, but I finished the second one because I was testing my new tool uh, which is the sock ruler <laughs> you may have seen these uh, about a few different people sell them they're not massively Popular. I haven't seen loads of people with them, um, but I designed this one myself. So I sat there for a while, taking all the measurements. It, yeah, it took me a while um, <laughs> to work it all out. Uh, but basically, on one side you've got shoe sizes, on the other you've got an inch counter, um, and basically you put one end into the heel that you're knitting and then you can work out how how much longer you need to uh, knit the sole of the foot for. So I used that with this one to double check that the sock ruler works and is the right size and thankfully it is. So I've got these on my website now if you're a sock knitter as well. Uh, they are great for <laughs> gift knitting. Uh, so if you know someone's shoe size, you don't have to get them to keep trying on the socks to make sure they fit. You can literally just use this um, and knit to their shoe size, which I thought was really handy. <laughs> and I definitely needed them because I'm planning on knitting people's socks this year for Christmas. Uh, so I designed this one and made it. It's now available. Just putting in a little plug. <laughs> but basically I have one sock that I knitted by trying on constantly and the other one I knitted using the uh, sock ruler and actually the sock ruler one fits a lot better than the one that I was kind of trying on and guessing which is kind of nice it just proves that it works uh, yeah I started another pair of socks as well using my Be Like My Valentine's yarn but I've literally just cast it on so there's no point showing you because there is only two rows done so with the success of feeling like I've achieved things and finishing projects and then finishing this garment um, I got really excited and cast on the summer secret summer crop top by Jessie May designs um, I used a mini set that I've had for a while in my stash. I used a mini set by Pigment and Ply. Uh, I think she stopped dyeing it now because I went on to see if I could get another set and they're not available anymore. Um, so it was five mini skeins of DK weight yarn um, and then it managed to do pretty much the entire top in it. Um, so all the mini skeins Oh, this one and then the only bit that I had to use extra yarn on is the straps um, so I went for uh, crossed straps at the back I can't really hold it with two hands it doesn't quite work there you go uh, so I crossed the straps at the back but I used my own yarn for that one um, it was basically 
something that I dyed that went wrong but it seemed to work with the uh, yarn I had from Pigment and Ply so I've used it all together um, and yeah it fits perfectly again I, I, I seem to be quite lucky at the moment didn't gauge to watch but managed to knit so that I fit it fitted like down perfectly um, I'll see if I can upload a video of me wearing it uh, so you can see the fit again it's like a crop top fit so it cuts off just at my sort of waistline um, and goes up quite high it's just it's just a really nice comfy thing I haven't um, yeah I haven't blocked it so the the ribbing at the bottom keeps curling up uh, but when I actually try it on the ribbing sort of stays flat because it's um, quite tight to the skin so I didn't I didn't think I'd bother blocking it I thought I'll wear it and then um, when it's I like wash <laughs> after I've washed it and dried it I will block it then um, rather than doing it straight away because it doesn't really matter too much to be honest but yeah it's really nice to have another thing finished I knitted it in about a week which is quite quick for me especially because it's a finished garment <laughs> um, so yeah it was really nice a nice quick win um, and it's not a pair of socks which is really nice so I think I will be doing more of these but maybe using my own yarn so maybe dyeing up a sort of fade kit mini mini fade kit um, uh, for myself maybe doing that but maybe in some brown tones maybe browns or reds making a bit more autumn a bit more like this one uh, yeah that's, that's what I'm tempted by anyway so that's, a, that's another project done oh, so many <laughs> it's just really nice um, so it's actually been a while but uh, originally I used to crochet I used to make the amigurumi I always find it really difficult to say the amigurumi um, ergurumi I don't know I used to crochet a lot of uh, little creatures and things uh, when I was at uni just to pass the time so I made like cats and things uh, and my sister for Christmas just gone she bought me the pick-a-pow pick a pay however you say it um, crochet book which is filled with really really cute um, just crocheted creatures uh, so they are just really pretty uh, little toys um, so I bought myself some yarn and I uh, started crocheting one and actually it's turned out really really well uh, I've already bought yarn to make another one out of the book um, it's really nice and easy and it was just lovely to sit down and crochet rather than knit um, so so far it's not finished quite yet uh, but I've basically got to sew all the the parts of the toy together uh, but I'm making a little bat <laughs> um, so he's got a really cute little face uh, so it's just really nice and 3D he's got uh, just little arms and a little wing so I've crocheted all the parts I've just got to sew them all together which is the part I dislike doing um, so he has been sat around for a few weeks just hanging out with no ears and just one arm uh, at the moment <laughs> but I don't know he's kind of cute anyway but I will finish him in the next few weeks because I want to start another one um, but yeah he's just just really cute I, I don't know what it is so um, this is just in merino yarn I can't remember the brand that I used but I will put it in the description box below but look at this cute little face um, you had the option of adding like a little smile and things but I kind of like him just like that you know like the traditional teddy bears where they literally just have the nose uh, they don't put any facial expression on them I thought that was really cute uh, so I will leave him like that but yeah we'll finish him soon but now I just need to actually get around to sewing his ears and things on um, but that's a, that's a future stuff problem to do uh, because I have a few other things that I've also cast on 
because I have recently had castanitis and decided just to keep going with it. Um, so uh, the shawlography uh, mystery knit along starts uh, next week. Yeah, next week. Uh, I've got the yarn ready for it to cast on when the pattern comes out. But until then, I decided to cast on another shawl. Um, I, yeah, I can't stop myself at the moment. Um, oh God, it's covered in cat hair. So a while ago, there was a handful of yarn shops in the UK that all participated together in an event called the I Knit 7. Um, and during that event, I picked myself up a project from Ginger Twist Studios. Uh, basically, there's a section where you can say how much you want to spend on a project um, and then give little descriptive words and she will basically put together a kit for you. Um, and it comes in this really cute bag that is now covered in cat hair, which is pretty apt because there is a cat on the bag. Um, so <laughs> the project she put together for me was unfurl the pattern was the uh, the knit me shawl um, which is just a basic shawl really but it's got beading around the edges like spiky beading parts around the edges um, I thought that was kind of cute uh, so it came with everything that I needed for it so it came with a skein of Ginger Twist Studios Yakety Yak base um, and it came with a bag filled with beads which is handy because I do not have beads um, so the beads have like a greeny blue tinge to them and then the yarn is kind of a grey tone base but it's got this really nice sheen to it um, so I have started knitting it and now everything is tangled in the bag delightful so I've started knitting it there's not a lot to it quite yet uh, I do have one of my stitch markers just on the bottom just a leaping hair um, uh, so you can see there's the beading going on the edge I had a bit of trouble at the start because I've never used beading with uh, knitting um, and I had to try and find a crochet hook that was small enough to fit the tiny tiny beads on um, but still be able to pick up the yarn so that was a bit of an effort but I've managed to just about do it <laughs> um, using a crochet hook that I originally used to use on Ant's dreadlocks um, so just about fit it uh, but yeah it's been really nice um, it's a nice easy pattern it's going to take me a while I think uh, just because it takes me a little bit longer to add in the bead um, so rather than just going back and forth all the time you have to, on the start of the row, you have to add the bead and that just slows me down a little bit. Um, but I'm hoping to have it finished soon. It's actually just a one skein project. Um, so it's, it's quite nice. I don't know if I will wear the shawl once I've finished it, but it's kind of nice just having a project. It's kind of nice just having a project that's sorted for me. I don't have to worry about getting everything together. Uh, so that might be a gift at the end. And it's kind of nice using yak yarn as well, because I've never used it. In usual perfect timing, my camera battery died halfway through that. So that's great. Good. Um, <laughs> uh, I can't quite remember where I was too in, in that conversation. So I'm just going to move on. Just gonna just gonna roll with it and go with it. Uh, so the other day I met up with my friend Catherine um, and both of us are quite big readers. We read similar-ish things so we both really enjoy fantasy stuff uh, so yeah we have that in common and we decided to meet up and take a day trip out to uh, Book Barn International out in Hallistrow in Somerset. Book Barn is a second-hand bookshop. It's a big, big warehouse uh, and they have a small section there where you can shop the second-hand books as well and they've got like a little cafe and stuff and uh, most of the second-hand books are around a pound to two pound each. 
so it's really nice to like rummage through everything there's no real organization to it they have like a very small section for fantasy books they've got like craft books and stuff but they've also got a giant section that's just unsorted basically uh, so it's always nice to have a rummage through it and see what you can find i've been there a few times before because i used to live like two doors down from it uh, so I used to go there quite often um, and be able to pick up secondhand books uh, for quite cheap, which was really nice. But we went there and it was the best trip ever. The cafe was closed, unfortunately, when we went. But we managed to wander around for, I think, a good hour in the end. And both of us picked up loads of books. So my friend Catherine picked up 10 uh, National Geographic magazines. I think it was 10 for like two pound I think it was or something stupid like that uh, so she rummaged through like all of their ones so that she could find uh, some really good magazines that she can draw from the photos and stuff from because she's uh, also an artist so we met at university when I was studying Toronto Applied Art uh, which is how we know each other and we got on and then I wandered into the craft book section i found a massive stack of old knitting books and they they are just they are just perfect they're so good uh, i found oh my god i found so many good uh old magazines that were like embroidery and tapestry stuff but it was just on cats there must have been about 20 of these magazines and it was just on cat and tapestry and I was so tempted to buy them. I didn't because I wouldn't know what to do with anything, <laughs> anything to do with that because it's not my, not my thing generally. Uh, but I found some, I found some books. They were, they were too good not to buy. So I bought all of them. <laughs> there was a few more that I was tempted by. Um, I'm going to save the best one for last because seeing is believing. Um, I picked up uh, Knit for Seasons, uh, which is cut into uh, four sections in the book uh, for a section for each season, which I thought was really cool. Um, the the, the colours that they've picked for the, the knitwear is quite obviously quite retro and kitsch, um, but the actual patterns and the, the shape of some of the designs look really nice. Uh, and I think if you picked like just a really nice uh, colour tone for it, I think they'd look great. There's a few in here that was like, yeah, I would wear those. So let me see if I can find them. I'll try not to give you too much of the actual pattern. But there's this one. Um, and I really liked the, the cut of the cardigan design. Um, I don't know. Oh, there you go. Just about make out it. And it's just like a really nice baggy cardigan that I saw. Um, and I think ignoring the the floral elements on it and the sparkly sparkly yarn I think if it, that was just a really nice like uh, brown or green I think that'd be a really nice like cozy like shrug thing to wear on it um, but there was like there's dress patterns in there there's some skirts there's some like coordinated like tops and bottoms they're just they're, they were it was too good not to pick up uh so that was one of them uh and knit for seasons uh the other one i picked up is knitting in vogue which was this one again uh some of the colors no thank you um it's it, they, they were quite like 70s 80s a lot of these books uh and I think yeah like I said I think the the shape wear of like the actual knitting patterns is really good and and this one actually had just some really nice like standard jumpers and stuff in it which I think were really cool uh, so that was the other one I picked up um, I picked up a machine knitting book uh, I don't think I've mentioned this before but a while ago I traveled down to watch it and I bought a second hand knitting machine. I still haven't used it because I have no idea what I'm doing with it. I will eventually, but so I picked up a machine knitting book so that I can make some of the patterns in there. But I just need to <laughs> need to work out how to use the knitting machine. Currently it's just been sat underneath my sofa for the last like 12 months. Uh, so I think I'm gonna have to book myself on like a little course. There's a 
knitwear designer locally uh, called Rhea Burns and she does uh, machine knitting courses and stuff so uh, like uh, you can take your own um, knitting machine with you and she'll show you how to use it as well so I think that's what I need to book myself in for or ask for for Christmas or something right that was the third book <laughs> you've got to ready yourself for this one I swear it it, it just just look at that for a cover that's just too <laughs> it's too good look there's even a little there's even a little cat and and it just if you saw it somewhere you you just had to buy it like i want this as a poster i want to frame it and put it on my wall it, look at the just look at the end pages i mean oh like this is the end page how how could i not buy this book i mean I, the, some of the patterns are just like no no i would not wear that uh and then again similar to the vogue one there was some some actually quite nice uh like that's not bad that looks like a nice cable jumper um and there was a few mohair ones in here as well that i was like oh that would be nice with some alpaca or something so there was like a nice lightweight cardigan and i was like oh all right that that was that was the first one i picked up and i went yes i will keep this one <laughs> um they were they were two pound each i think it's because they're the the large hardback books uh so i think a lot of their a lot of book barns standard like fiction books are like a pound each uh i've managed to go in there before and picked up some laney taylor uh who is an amazing young adult uh fantasy writer um so it's always worth wandering in because obviously it's secondhand books so everything all the the books change quite often uh every month they do a kilo sale as well so i'm i'm tempted to go there at the start of uh this month and go down and have a look around <laughs> um just yeah i just if, I, I don't i don't know what to add because the the books are just too they're too glorious that was another day trip that we done in september uh a lot of other things have just kind of been standard worky work stuff so my day job stuff and then running wool and witch as well updating the website and keeping up to trying to keep up to date with sending out like newsletters and posting on instagram as well i have also dyed up some uh new colors as well ready for uh october so at the end of the month i was going to do like a little mini shop update uh, i've got a few new colors as well um stitch markers i'm going to try and restock i I'm ironing out some details to do a trunk show at my local yarn shop, so that's Alternate Universe, uh, with the lovely Kim that runs it. Um, hopefully it will be the end of the month, but we've still got to like confirm all the details and everything. But I, it would be amazing if any of you are local. My phone is going off. <laughs> it would be amazing if anyone that's local uh, can come pop out over the weekend when I'm running that. Uh, to keep up to date with that uh, you can either subscribe to my mailing list or uh, follow me on Instagram is probably the best way of keeping up to date with that. Also this month I've got to pack and get everything ready to post off my Christmas castle boxes so they've been really popular which has been amazing. Uh, this year was the first time I've done a castle box. Last year I done an advent calendar which sold really well. Uh, I didn't really fancy <laughs> dyeing up 25 different colourways for this year so I thought I'd just do a really nice high quality cast on box with some really pretty stuff inside so that's what I planned uh, for this year and they've all sold. I sold more than I was expecting. I had to put on some more boxes later on which was great uh, but the pre-orders for that closed yesterday so they're all done. 
Um, uh, so I've got to pack them and post them off over the next sort of month or two, uh, ready for Christmas. Uh, and today I've launched another troop box because I couldn't help myself. <laughs> so for October I am running a Halloween troop box this year. Uh, it's for a sock set and then some new stitch markers and you'll get some little other goodies and extra Halloween sweets and stuff in it. Uh, so I'm quite excited about putting that one together as well. That one's been off the cuff, kind of me going, hey, let's do a Halloween box. Let's add that in. Uh, so it's not really been like super organised as much as the Christmas one, but you'll still get some really nice yarn and some really nice stitch markers for it as well. So pre-orders for that open today and they close on the 25th of October. So I have time to pack them and ship them so they would hopefully arrive on Halloween, uh, especially if you're in the UK. Uh, if you're interested in that, I will leave a link in the description box below for that one. I think that's pretty much it. This whole camera battery dying halfway through has really thrown me on what I was talking about. So there's probably some other things I have forgotten, I, but I have no idea what. <laughs> This happens every time and I still don't learn about writing notes about what to say and things. But I think that's fine. You guys all know. I'm just not, I'm just scatterbrained. I don't have a plan. I'm planless. Such is my life. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave it there before I start rambling on about some other things. Anyway, I hope you guys have a really good day, week, month, depending how long it takes me before I make another video. <laughs> uh, let me know what you guys are up to. Have you found, have you also had like cast on like this as well? Have you just cast on everything since it's turned the cold weather? Because that's what I keep doing at the moment. Are you uh, joining in on shawlography and the mystery knit along? Uh, I don't know. Let me know guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe for this video. I'll see you again. Bye.